Good to have you with us tonight, folks. Thanks for watching. The story was in Newton, Iowa today. I was there, and it was the same old stuff. Let's see. Freedom, the Constitution, limited government, protect liberty, repeal regulations, all pretty simple stuff and straightforward, kind of like Iowa. A crowd of about 150 people showed up today to let me, and let me tell you, they were staunch Ron Paul supporters. Drew, the, the, the polling that's out there, very favorable to Ron Paul right now down the stretch. What does it feel like on the ground? Uh, I've been involved in a number of campaigns, and I can tell you from this one here, there are, there's a, a, it's positive and it's growing. Now, is it growing by leaps and bounds? I would say no. It's a pretty consistent, steady growth that we've experienced throughout the whole campaign. What's the attraction? I think the attraction, uh, the, the young people probably reflect it best, and that is they see an honest, humble statesman talking about the future, their future, not just the election, presenting realistic comments and, and questions about the problems and solutions. And I think people are saying, you know, this guy is honest, and he is saying the right things, and he has been for a long time, and the credibility of the messenger has to match the credibility of the message. And Ron Paul's got them both together. That straight talk Ivers is talking about was rolled out in a new television campaign ad today titled The One We've Been Looking For. The Washington machine is strangling our economy. Politicians who supported bailouts and mandates, serial hypocrites and flip-floppers can't clean up the mess. One man stands alone. A real plan to cut a trillion dollars year one. Balance the budget in three. Consistent, incorruptible, guided by faith and principle. Ron Paul. The one we've been looking for. What do you like about it? About Ron Paul? Yeah. What is there not to like about <laughs> um, Former military, I come from Indiana. I was raised in on principles and morals. And um, go back 5, 10, 20, 30 years, Ron Paul's had the same consistent message. Something that uh, none of the other candidates can even fake. So message on principles, morals, our personal rights, our personal liberties, a restricted government keeps out of our pockets, out of our lives. Something the government was never meant to do, and our founding fathers were very specific about that. How old are you? I'm 23. And what do your friends say? Most of them, my, I don't have friends many my age because most of them I'm kind of distant because I'm in politics. I'm in a little bit above my age level. Most of the kids my age are worried about college, worried about what club to go to tomorrow night, not about their future. But Ron Paul speaks to you. Yes. You got up and said he was the only one. Yes, sir. Absolutely. What's the attraction? It's because he follows the Constitution. And that, for me, it just that's it. All these other people want to... He follows the Constitution. And as good, bad, or indifferent as you want to explain that, when I was in, I swore to con defend the Constitution. Like he said, from all enemies, foreign and domestic. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, half the politicians we have now should be hung for treason because they haven't followed the Constitution. Will he win Iowa? Yes, sir. You think Ron Paul will win the caucus? Yes, sir. And beyond that, what does a victory in Iowa do for him, you think? Well, you know what? That's a hard one. I, I don't think... I mean, how do you feel about the establishment being against him? I mean, the Republican establishment... Screw him. I'm sorry, just screw them. Uh, 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 they, they gave us McCain. In two, the Republican establishment gave us McCain in 2008. What did it get us? Nothing. The latest polling in Iowa shows Ron Paul with a four-point lead over Mitt Romney, 24% to 20%. Paul seems to be holding his lead, and with the front-runner status comes all the media attention. There was more media today there than he has ever seen on the campaign trail so far. I caught up with Politico's Roger Simon. Roger, what's, what's happening here? What's happening on the ground? How do you see this unfolding in the final week? Um, all is a bit of confusion. Uh, all the campaigns I talk to uh, are a bit worried because they're calling their supporters in these last few days, identifying their most uh, devoted supporters and making sure they come out to the caucuses on Tuesday. But what they're finding is very soft support. People saying, yeah, I like Romney, yeah, I like Paul, yeah, I like Gingrich, but I really haven't seen the other guy yet. 
And so, you know, don't count on me. And that's worrying them. So this undecided number is a real deal. Yeah, I think it is a real deal. Um, and it, it may suppress turnout. The general rule of thumb is the lower the turnout, uh, the better that uh, organization counts. And Ron Paul, um, it is said, has the best organization. So a low turnout could hurt a Ron Paul campaign. High turnout, probably, I'm sorry, a low turnout would help a Ron Paul campaign. High turnout would probably help a Romney or a Gingrich campaign. Is Romney the guy to beat from Ron Paul's perspective at this point? I think he is, although his ads are attacking everybody. But um, there are three elements here. There's passion, there's organization, and there's electability. Uh, Ron Paul probably has two of those three. Passionate supporters, good organization, but very few people probably can see him behind that desk in the Oval Office. Mm -hmm. Mitt Romney, on the other hand, has that electability thing going for him. Mm -hmm. You can actually envision him. His organization is probably pretty good. He lacks passion. Yeah. Newt probably has some passion lacking in the others. So it's you're struggling to get at least two out of the three yeah. if you can. You know, you talk about organization. Uh, last night at a basketball game yeah. in small town Iowa, look at this folder that the Ron Paul people put out. I mean, that that's quite a commitment. Yeah. This is, I mean, he's in his position on national fence, uh, Im immigration, war in the Middle East, health care, jobs, taxes. I mean, this pretty much spells it out. Yeah. From what you've seen, is anybody else doing this kind of stuff? They all have literature, but this is a good piece of literature. Um, oddly enough, Iowans actually read this stuff. Yeah. When you go knocking on doors... You know, your volunteers go out, and somebody's going to ask you, what's your position on immigration? What's your position on taxes? What's your position on hog lots, which is big in this state? And that volunteer is expected to either know or have a piece of literature to hand him and say, it's all in here, ma'am. It's all in here, sir. Read this. You'll know where Ron Paul stands. That's helpful. Very good. Here it is. This is the ground game that we have been talking about with Ron Paul. And it's true that everybody out there that's running for president in Iowa does have material, but not like this and not the kind of ground game. I mean, to go out to basketball games and public events and put this kind of material out there for people to read, I think it's pretty, pretty amazing. And it's pretty organized. I mean, if you if you look at what Ron Paul is telling the people of Iowa, if he is president of the United States, he's going to get rid of the IRS. He's going to end the income tax. He's going to bring our troops home. He's going to end foreign wars and the Fed, stop foreign aid, secure the borders, fix health care, repeal the Patriot Act. He was big on that today in Newton, Iowa, talking about how we got to get rid of the Patriot Act. It violates the Fourth Amendment. He would return the powers to the States, that's raw meat to the Tea Partiers, the Ninth and Tenth Amendment, balance the budget if he could do that, abolish corporate subsidies, goodbye farmers in Iowa, you're not going to be getting any help from this guy, and of course, return spending to the 2006 levels. Now, this kind of stuff works in a state of older demographics because as Roger Simon says, hey, People read this stuff. They do read it. And this has had a big impact. And since they've been putting this kind of stuff out, this is when Ron Paul has been moving up in the polls. It's the direct mail tactic that is an old conservative thing that was put together way back when, 30, 40 years ago, by Richard Vigory and the old conservatives. This is how Ron Paul's ground game is getting people into the fold. Now, the question is, is he going to be able to turn people out? And he's already picking and choosing his media. The candidate has stopped doing national interviews. Maybe it has something to do with the ordeal he had the other day with CNN. They talk only to local voters and local Iowa media. Ron Paul did a job today, did a good job today of giving the cold shoulder to the national media when they were hounding him. But he did respond to my question when I got in close to him about infrastructure. Candidate, we'll get somebody to stand up and talk. Do you, do you feel like you have that infrastructure in all of the... Well, I mean, like, uh, people awful. would go into a caucus room and they would stand up and make a pitch for the candidate in all of these places around the state. Do you feel comfortable that you've got a spokesman at each one of these places? I don't, I don't have that information to answer. 
He doesn't have that information. I mean, I find that surprising. It's all about organization in Iowa. Ron Paul could not confirm to me that he will have 1,774 people ready to step up and speak out at caucus night. Now, he's actually not going to need that many. He's going to need about 1,000 because that's how many caucus sites that they have condensed it down to. But this is how it works in Iowa. What's going to happen is that there's going to be a small town. People are going to caucus at a, at a given location. There may be 50, 100 or 200 people show up. And then each candidate has got to have a surrogate, a selected surrogate in from that area to step up and give a pitch about a candidate that they support. And if you've got a high number of people who are undecided, all of a sudden, well, there's Susie Brown sitting over there. She runs the hardware store. And uh, there's, there's Farmer Johnson down the road. He just got off his tractor and came in this evening to find out what was going on. And he's kind of undecided, too. All of a sudden, they start milling in groups. Somebody makes a strong pitch, and they say, oh, yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to go with that guy. And so I, I, this is the ground game that I think maybe Rick Santorum has. This is the ground game that I think maybe Michelle Bachman has. And this is the wild card in all of of this. And of course, both Romney and Gingrich are attacking the front runner Ron Paul on past controversial social positions. The staunch Ron Paul supporters think fellow Iowans will see through all of this. Iowans are very politically savvy and they'll see through that. I really do. I mean, we hear the message and see the message that comes from him. It's very, you know, he's a simple man and he says it in a simple, plain way. And I think we see through that. So the straight talk will overcome any controversy. Yes, sir. Yeah, I saw Michelle. I was just telling somebody else, you know, Michelle Bachman this morning said that Ron Paul wouldn't defend our country if they were even attacked. And that's a bunch of hooey. Well, the Paul campaign admitted to me this afternoon, one of their officials, that Rick Santorum is having a surge. They don't know what to make of it. I'll visit with the candidate, Rick Santorum, tomorrow. And, of course, uh, they think that the public in Iowa has figured out what 84 ethics violations by the former Speaker of the House is all about. Some campaign workers told me that they think that Newt Gingrich is history. Late word this afternoon, Gingrich will spend a half a million dollars the rest of this week going up to the Iowa caucus trying to fix his poll numbers in the state. But watching the crowd today in Newton, Iowa, there's nothing rah-rah about Ron Paul. He almost has a fatalistic type of message. If we don't do this, this is what's going to happen to America. There's no talk about hope or change. Uh, there's talk about change, but it is if we don't do this, we're going to explode as a country. And the crowd, is it's like a... Um, it's like a college professor, and he is 76 years old, a grand old statesman standing up, not looking or giving the big line to the people to get a bunch of rah-rah going. They're very intent. It's like it's a college classroom, and he's explaining to them what's wrong with the country, why he should be president, and where we have to go as a nation. And the people who are there following Ron Paul, I mean, they are staunch believers. I mean, they would, they, they would try to do, they'd run through fire for this guy. And they sit there and they consume this stuff and they believe in what he is all about. If they turn out to vote on caucus night, Ron Paul could win big time. It's all about the turnout. They think that the young vote and they also think the independent vote will go to their camp. Get your cell phones out. I want to know what you think. Tonight's question. Who will win the Iowa caucus on Tuesday? Give you three choices tonight. Mitt Romney, text A for Mitt Romney, text B for Ron Paul, text C for Rick Santorum. To 622-639, you can go to our blog at ed.msnbc.com. We'll bring you the results later on in the show.